got your dice and you got your character sheet. Well, it's time to roll some ability scores. We're gonna break down the six basic ability scores and what they mean on today's Handbook or Helper. Don't know how to play? We'll show you the way. Handbook, 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 handbook or Helper. Handbook or Helper. Now when you look to the far left of your character sheet, you will see this stack of six boxes framed in a delicate filigree. Your character is built off of these six abilities. Strength, Dexterity, Constitution, Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma. Now the higher the ability score means a higher modifier, which means the better you are in that department. But first, let's break down what these stats actually mean. Strength determines, well, your strength. This is reflected in your athletic skill as well as utilizing your brute force in situations. Want to be able to push a foe in battle or move a boulder out of the way of the entrance of a tomb? Well, hope you didn't skip like day. Most melee weapons favored by brute force classes like a barbarian or fighter use strength to attack, which means you want to be pretty strong so you have a better chance of hitting your enemies. I mean, warhammers are heavy. Dexterity is your ability to be light on your feet. The more dexterous you are, the better chance you have at balancing on a thin board to cross an acid pit or dodge out of the way from a trigger trap. Now this ability affects your acrobatics, sleight of hand, and stealth skills. Ranged weapons and more finesse-based blades like rapiers and daggers use dexterity for their attacks. If you're playing a rogue, you're definitely going to want to be dexy and dodgy. A constitution measures your general hardiness, like your health and stamina. A higher constitution modifier also means more hit points each level. Examples of constitution checks would be to see how long you can hold your breath, survive in extreme weather conditions, or resist fatigue on long travels. It's also very important when it comes to resisting poisons or physical corruption from nasty spells. Ah, intelligence. Now think of intelligence as book smarts. Intelligent characters are generally more logical, with good mental recall, and a breadth of learned knowledge about the world. Arcana, history, investigation, nature, and religion are all intelligence-related skills. Book-learned wizards use intelligence as the basis of their spellcasting, their deep knowledge helping them shape the elements with their mind. Wisdom reflects how intuitive and in touch you are to the subtleties of the world. How perceptive you are, trying to pick up on if a noble is lying to you. Want to figure out if someone has camped recently at a mysterious fire pit? Well, a higher wisdom can help you with all those. Animal handling, insight, medicine, perception, and survival are all wisdom-based skills. Now, classes like clerics and druids use wisdom as their spellcasting abilities, being that they are very in touch with the world around them and the divinity they worship. There is often confusion on the difference between wisdom and intellect. Just remember, intellect is about knowing, wisdom is about feeling. At last, but certainly not least, charisma. Whether you're looking for your character to be charming, commanding, or just plain confident when it comes to interacting with others, you're going to want a high charisma. The social encounters in D&D can be almost as brutal as the combat encounters with just as many consequences if you know, handled poorly. And sometimes, a successful persuasion or intimidation attempt can end or circumvent a combat encounter before it even begins. Every adventuring party needs a people person. Now that you know what these abilities represent, it's time to figure out your ability scores. Now, there are a few ways that you can do this based on your DM's preference, and we'll cover the others in a separate video. But for this example, we'll show the method we use on Critical Role. Grab four d6 or four six-sided dice. Roll, and drop the lowest number of those three. Add up the remaining three and jot that number down on some scratch paper. Do this five more times and you'll be left with your six scores that you can then plug where needed to build your character however you like. Just be mindful of what class you're playing so you can favor the stats that are most helpful for your character abilities. Don't forget to add any additional bonuses that your character's chosen race or feats may provide, but do note that the natural maximum an ability score can climb to is 20. Once you have your six ability scores, it's time to figure out your modifiers. Now modifiers are the numbers that you add to your dice rolls. The Player's Handbook has this handy chart on page 13 to help you figure it out, but let's break it down. Ability scores of 10 are considered average, just right down the middle. Not great, but not bad either. So a score of 10 gives you a modifier of 0, meaning you won't really be adding anything to those d20 rolls. From here, think of it like a sliding scale that can go in either direction. Every even number above 10, you get a plus 1 to your modifier. So a 12 is a plus 1, a 14 is a plus 2, 16 is a plus 3, and so on. For every odd number below 10, you get a minus 1 to your modifier. 9 is a minus 1, 7 is a minus 2, 5 a minus 3. You get the picture. As a note, don't fret about having a couple lower ability scores. I mean, if placed well, they can help define a lot of your role-playing fun with the character. Weaknesses often make for memorable story moments.
performance. We'll end today's episode here for now, but future videos will cover how these scores affect your skills and saving throws. See you soon, and is it game night yet? Handbook, 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 handbook,